Welcome to our last day of Zentangle Project Pack number 11. My name is Rick. Hi, I'm Maria, and I'm going to use our Marcus Operandus and prepare the tile. We're going to mark off the, the B and the C here so that we can get our, uh, our optimum viewing spots. <laughs> right. And we're going to do that on both the sides and both the ends. Yeah. And you can see how Maria's lining that up with the diagonal. You can use any size sheet of paper that, that fits within that, that space. Uh, we just put those dotted lines in there for So your you would line whatever the corners would be right. with that diagonal. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just uh, dropping some lines here. And I like to wiggle my lines there. I seem to be able to do, believe it or not, a straighter line if I wiggle them a little bit. Maybe you can try that and see if that works for you. It looks like the uh, edge of the of the tile. Yeah, it does. It does. How cool is that? Right. So we're going to do a tile called Molygon, one of my favorites. You can see the size of this curve that's right up, it goes around my nail, my thumbnail. And what will you do? You do the inner curve first, and then you aura around it. This is your first. The first shape is probably the most important one kind of rules the rest. I'm going to aura down to about three quarters of the way. Or maybe phi. Maybe phi. <laughs> oh my god, it's probably right? phi, right. right? So we're going to aura that first one and then join the, the edges. And we're going to continue to do this. But you can see that I'm sort of going around that tip so that it, it, uh, it curves. It's like a spirally kind of shape. I'm going to go hooked over it almost. Go yeah. down to about five. <laughs> Ish. Ish. <laughs> and then join the uh, the outside. So you're not worrying about the outside. You're only worrying about the uh, that first line that that is an aura. And these can be any size mm -hmm. and they uh, you know, Let's put a little tiny one right in there. They look very much like uh, boat shells. If you go to the beach, and in the newsletter, we have pictures of the boat shells uh, clamping onto each other. To me, they look like bananas, but that's just me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, start to fill them. I'm going to use the, the molygon as a reticula, and I'm going to put that curve right down on the, at that back side. And I'm going to do a little bit of uh, crescent moon. Easy enough. We did this on the first day, or Rick's first tile. And, uh, and then we're going to aura around that, that first curve we put down. So this uh, fragment that she's doing, if uh, you watched yesterday's video where I did a square version of this very same fragment. So it gives you a whole new range of ways to use the uh, reticula and fragment approach now that you can see how diverse uh, reticula could, uh, can hold a fragment. So I think this is a very important lesson for us to, to hang on to, is that you can know five tangles and probably be pretty happy for the rest of your life because <laughs> uh, you can always do them a little differently. And this is an important part of Zentangle, that uh, that we are able to reconfigure and redesign one concept. And you'll see how that, how through so many of the tangles, the concepts of auraing and drawing behind carry through as well. So you never have to worry about how many tangles you know. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You you learn whatever you want to learn, and and you do what you what you want to do. So I'm picking up my graphic one, which is the fat uh, tip pen, and I'm doing an aura around the whole piece. I like the contrast of the line there. That's yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a fat tip pen, you can just use your your O1 or whatever micron you have around, or pen you happen to have. Very cool. You can see that little molygon just kind of sneaks in there. It doesn't even yeah. need a... Uh, an but I think you go oh, back and there you go. <laughs> take care of that, right? Very nice. 
I'm always uh, going in and adjusting things. I go in and, and uh, have just, fun just with the lines up, and yeah. touch it up and love it, add, add love. Now, we're, again, we're going to do a, a version of the, the uh, tile that Molly and Martha did, which was poke root. And this is called poke leaf. And you, it starts with the stem, like the poke root. And it's the same principle. The same principle. And you're always going to be drawing a little bit behind. I'm adding this little uh, detail on the stem. To me, it almost looks like a wood carving or wood block print. It has that, uh, just a detail. This, the tiniest little detail will give it some more character. We're always looking to add one more little detail. And then I... Besides for doing just a plain poke leaf, I added that turn in of the, the, mm. the turn. What do you call that one? The alert it's like leaf it's turning. folding over. Yeah, the folding yeah. over. Poke leaf is one of my favorite tangles because it fits into so many really cool spaces. This triangular shape uh, can uh, elegantly fit uh, almost like, like an Escher drawing. Right. You know? Well, and it's a natural, it's just the way things in nature fit into the space that they're working with really, mm -hmm. really elegantly. So you can see how pretty this is. It, it goes around in this uh, beautiful, almost looks like a sunflower, doesn't it, Rick? Well, yeah. so in a, right along with this whole sunflower theme, I think you, uh, I don't know if you were picking up on, on that when you did that, but well, we've got the f sunflowers in the front yard. Right, right. So instead of petals, we have these little leaf shapes. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's uh, such a organic. You can see that these leaves are all a little bit different, just all a little bit different. And now she's doing just the tips behind Peeking there. Peeking out. Yeah. Peeking out. Definitely inspired by the sunflowers. Whether you Right. I, I actually hadn't thought of that. And then you brought the sunflowers in on the introduction. Right. Right. So it's a, an, another example of like being, you know, taking in the environment without perhaps even, you know, being that deliberately conscious of it. How pretty it is just with right? that, you know? Definitely ah. sunflower. Yeah. And How it gets cool. even more so. <laughs> so now again with my uh, graphic one, I'm going to go around and add a detail. So we're, we're auraing. And uh, take your time. I, I tend to do things pretty quickly because I've, you know, I've been an artist my whole life. I do everything quickly. And uh, so you can stop the camera at any time to give yourself time to really enjoy the aura. And here's another one, another aura, but we're giving it a lot of space. And just so you know, it doesn't have to be exactly, but it's just roughly going around when it when it peeks out, and then going around that beautiful shape of the leaf. It almost looks like a, a hmm, what do I want to say, I like a, instead of a quiet aura, it's kind of yelling at us a little bit. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's resonating from a, from a wider, right. wider, wider place. So you can, like, it's really nice that she's not trying to perfectly mimic it. It's this glow, a soft glow around it. So the next step is something we call coffering. And what we're going to do is we're going to join the places that, that stick out. So you can see, go into those corners and... Uh, take the, like the sharp take, edges of the inside right. part, yeah. And see, they don't have to exactly match or up. make yet. any sense at all. But they, they will. When you see it, it's all done. It's going to look exactly like it's supposed to. Uh, but this is a really great technique. I use it all the time. Uh, and it's inspired by architectural coffering, C-O-F-F-E-R-I-N-G, if you want to look that up. So already it looks really three-dimensional, like right. it's sitting up right. on a... Or like, Stand or like a, a ruffled collar. What are they, the, those mm. rough? Those rough that people used to wear around their neck. In uh, what is it Netherlands? Or, right. Yeah. Right. There's a name for it, but I can't remember what it is. I'm going to call it a rough ruffle. It's roughly okay.
But there's this playfulness of, of how she connected those, and the playfulness is consistently, you know, repeated throughout. I think that that essence of pattern being a function of repetition is a really uh, consistent theme throughout what we do. So I'm dropping some lines here that uh, aura, that pencil line, mm -hmm. uh, that, that phi ratio pencil line, just for some, uh, to connect it to the other side. And I'm going to do the, my, one of my new favorite tangles, which is a really simple yet a complex tangle called Duda. And it's just a series of lines. And, and you start from the top and, and you go almost to the bottom. And then you go almost from the top to the bottom. And it creates this uh, maze-like. Or uh, zipper-like. Like a zipper. Like that's why it's, it's called doo zippity doo -dah. Right. And uh, I love that. So again, I, re I really like the effect of these light and dark auras. That's yeah. a really cool thing. And that unexpected turn there. Very, very cool. So now it's like a looking sort of almost like a pinwheel, or or, or a sunflower. It's a sunflower. Uh, <laughs> it's a sunflower. Okay, sweetie, it's a sunflower. <laughs> so with my graphite pencil, I'm going to go in and add some some uh, details, and, and this is sort of where you would expect it, where where this uh, detail goes underneath the other part, and it all it always creates this magical uh, in and out, and you almost start to lose that sense of the original molygon shape. Mm. A lot of the tangles really invite uh, where to shade. You just see that over and under. Right. It. And you can, you can play with it in different ways. It's already lifting off. Mm. And you'll notice how she added graphite to, not necessarily to what was already black. So I'm going to go in and do the, the corners of the molygon shape, like it, towards the middle, so, so that will recess. You can see that, and ah, uh, it, it already pops right. Like right there. Isn't that cool? And you can always go back and add some more graphite. And the magic wand, the tortillon, does things that you, you can't even imagine, yeah. that this simple piece of twirl, twirled paper I'm going to add graph, uh, graphite on the outside of that uh, graphic one. And you can see the center f almost f elevating right before your eyes. Like It's the most cool thing. And that little gap between the, the heavy aura and the inner tangle really s helps set that off. It's true, huh? It's just that yeah. little bit of white, and it, get, it gets whiter. Yeah. How fun. Look at that. It really that. does look like you <laughs> pasted something on there. I know. Okay. So now I'm going to color in roughly every, every, every other little section that that created with the coffering. And again, you know, sometimes it's every other one, sometimes it's part of one. Uh, just it's be playful with this and uh, like in nature, nature doesn't uh, count yeah, things. Like my twenty-two petals there. Oh yeah. And even if it's not a uh, you know going from light to dark or dark to light, the the uh, tortillon makes this gray so smooth even in a solid space. So you, even when you see. Uh, me on, on uh, with the with the tortillon uh, bringing the graphite to the edge. You can see how soft mm -hmm. the edges are. Now comes color. So everybody got different colors in I, their uh, kit. We were talking about yeah. how how fun that is, because that almost forces you to have something that doesn't look like everybody else's. So you you're going to use your colors as you choose. And I love that about these project packs that, that kind of pushes you in a direction of making decisions on, decisions on your own. Yeah. 
Very nice. Yeah, the center, just like the center of the sunflower, right? Yeah. <laughs> Smooth, that smooothes into this uh, paper fiber really well. Mm -hmm. I love the texture of this paper. It, it makes you feel like a real artist. Um, it makes me feel like a mm. real artist. Like, that I'm, I'm, I have the uh, f good fortune of working on this handmade paper that this, you know, that the same paper that da Vinci used or... Rembrandt or wherever. Right, from the same mill. Yeah. Oldest continually functioning mill. Paper mill, yeah. yeah. I like it that you have it, you just did it on one side there. I'm going to add some blue here. And again, sort of balancing it on the, on the parts of the bevel, bevels, not gray. Right. And here comes the magic wand. Just bringing it all together. I didn't need to put much blue on because the blue is so intense. Um, so it just needed a little bit. You get to know your colors and, and, and sometimes you want intense, which is, that's fine too. Nice. You know, I, I I know that there's been people that have said that they'd just love to watch me draw. I love to watch me draw. <laughs> right? We're it's, like it's, mesmerized I know, here we're watching. It's like, we're, we're, supposed watching, to be we're supposed to be talking. I'm thinking, wow, that was cool. I didn't remember that part. <laughs> so it's just creativity. Right. Anybody's creativity, you know. This series has been a real treat for us, and, and the comments have been wonderful, and uh, after this, be sure to check out the uh, the wrap up video because we we have a lot of really cool stuff uh, to to share with you. Yes, yes. And uh, we're really enjoying seeing what everybody right, does. It, it's right, it's been amazing it's been to great. see what uh, pe where people are taking these seeds of ideas and just just running with them. Don't forget to put your job and put your name and perhaps the date or maybe you know some other little information that you were thinking about that day. Uh, this is all great stuff to go back and look at. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you in a moment. See ya. Bye. Bye now.